Good evening and welcome in. It's week six of the Iowa High School regular season. I'm Trent Condon as we get ready for week six and a great weekend in front of us here. Two games here on CISN TV. We'll talk more about those coming up here in just a little bit. But before we look forward, let's take a look back at what we saw back a week ago here across the landscape and across central Iowa here on Prep Preview. We're powered by Fairway. Game one, as we saw last week, it was Waukee High getting their first program victory after the split of high schools as the Warriors get it done at home against Johnston. 31-20 the final in this one. Great defensive effort out of Coach Baker's squad. They were all over the place, made it incredibly difficult for Johnson to run the football, something you rarely see from a Dragons team. They aired it out in a big-time way. Johnson had to throw the football 46 times overall in the game. Adrian Brodus, their sophomore quarterback, went 24 of 46, but the defense was stout all over the place for Waukee. Even as Johnston tried to come back in the game, it was just time in and time out. Waukee stepping up to a big-time level. Gabe Baker, the new head coach for Waukee, certainly had his team playing at a high level. And how about the play of the quarterback for the Warriors in Blake Hawk? Hawk goes 12 of 17 through the air, 131 yards and a touchdown in the passing game. And the quarterback also ran it 87 uh, for 87 yards and three touchdowns overall. Great performance from him. He's a tough young man. He's a wrestler, and you can see, certainly see that show up in a big-time way in the victory. Also, Ray Hall, he was pressed into duty, saw more playing time at the wide receiver spot. They had an injury out there at wide receiver. Hall stepped up in a big way. He had five grabs for 106 yards and a touchdown and talked about the defense led by Caden Ivory, who had six and a half tackles in the game, also a tackle for a loss. For Waukee as they pick up their first win, congratulations to the Warriors and their victory on Friday night. Our other game we had for you last week on CISN, Ankeny, the newly minted number one team in Class 5A. They pick up another big victory, 49-6 over the Rough Riders of Des Moines Roosevelt. This one again, we continue to see the development of their junior quarterback, J.J. Cole. Cole had a big performance in the victory as they run out to an early lead against the Rough Riders again. 49-6, the victory there. J.J. Cole, a talented young man. He's tall. He's six foot six. Made the move to Ankeny over to the south side of town in order to kind of work a little bit better with the offensive system that they have in place, and that showed up in a big-time way. You can see his developing. You can see how much more comfortable he's getting excuse me, in the passing game. How about this? 17 of 19 throwing, 271 yards and four touchdowns. Colin Kadolf, their outstanding running back, he was good again. He had three touchdowns in the game. And Brady McCullough, a lot of people believe he's got a chance to be a D1 wide receiver slash tight end. Big frame to him, maybe will grow into a tight end going forward. He had nine receptions for 146 yards and three touchdowns. Great game out of Brady McCullough. And then the defense really slowed down Jamison Patton and the rest of that Roosevelt squad. Tamden Webb Tate led the way. Five tackles, two tackles for loss. Also had a half sack as Ankeny gets past Des Moines Roosevelt 49-6. Other games from across central Iowa last week. It was Ames picking up a win against Sioux City North. 27-14 was the final in that one. West Des Moines Valley went on the road to Marshalltown. They get the win as they go to 4-1. 42-12 the final in that one. Ankeny Centennial, another game that we had the coverage from with our partners over in Sioux City. They get it done on the road. 30 to nothing was the final in that one against Sioux City East. Lincoln, another win as the rail splitters get it done. 35-6 the final in that one. Waukee Northwest, no problem as they welcomed in the Wolverines from Sioux City West. 74-0. The final there. Southeast Polk comes back in a big-time way. They get it done against Waterloo West at home. 49-7 the final there. Urbandale, another victory. Also 49-7 the final as they beat Des Moines East. Some of the scores from across the area. And finally, Dowling Catholic. It was a weird one. There was uh, problems on I-80 as they made their way over to Council Bluffs. They made short work, though, of Abe Lincoln. 58-7 the final as Dowling Catholic picks up the victory in Week 5 in the second win of the year for the Maroons. That's a look back at what we saw last week across the landscape. We'll get ready for this week. We'll hear from the coaches of your game. We got Gary Swenson coming up here from West Des Moines Valley. We'll also hear from both of our matchups coming up 
in the Ankeny game. Two games this week on CISN, Ankeny Centennial against Urbandale. That one should be real good, along with Ankeny against West Des Moines Valley, a top five matchup. We have it here for you on CISN TV. We'll take a quick break, come back, conversation with the coaches as we continue. You're watching Prep Preview on CISN TV, powered by Fairway. We are ready. We've waited for this one for a long time. The anticipation, the excitement, the intensity. The teams are on the field looking to build on last week's success. Construction doesn't need a play-by-play -play call, but it does need a team. Like the team at Graphite Construction Group. From concept to planning to building completion, our team is with you every step of the way. We've been building all over Iowa. Schools, offices, stadiums, critical services, and more. Talk with us. Tell us your vision, and you'll see and feel the difference of having the Graphite team with you every step, brick by brick, beam by beam, and play by play. And the beam is up! Mitch, this isn't a field goal. You mean like it's a touchdown! Graphite Construction Group! Graphite Construction Group. We build it better. So, Russ, what do you do in the offseason? Mitch, we don't have an off-season. Holtz Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. And at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Niggett, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at RushOnBusiness.com. Let Rush Niggett help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Niggett, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Welcome back to Prep Preview here on CISN TV, powered by Fairway. I'm Trent Condon here with you as we get ready for a conversation with the coaches presented by Elite Eye Care. Let's kick things off first. The head coach with the Valley Tigers, he is longtime coach Gary Swenson here on our conversation with the coach series. Welcome back once again to Prep Preview on CISN. Trent Condon with you as we talk to the coaches. It's conversation with the coaches brought to you by Elite Eye Care on University Avenue in West Des Moines. He is the head coach of the West Des Moines Valley Tigers. Gary Swenson here with us. And coach, as we get ready for this one, number one, Ankeny making the trip down for this matchup. Should be a good one. But before we get into that, we haven't talked in a couple of weeks, at least you and I. So let's talk a little bit about the development of your squad, what you've seen over the last three, four weeks. Well, it's, you know, as I said, the last time we talked, it's going to be a season long process in certain areas of our football team. And I, I think we're getting better. We've had some injuries and that's kind of stunted the growth a little bit, but you know, as we get guys back, hopefully if we can stay healthy, I think we'll be pretty competitive by the end of the year. 
we sit here with our homecoming game and the number one team in the state coming in defending state champions. So we're pretty aware of the challenge we have this week. But I think if you look back at our schedule, you know, Southeast Polk was clearly a better football team than us on that night. I think the rest of the games we've played, you know, we've been in a couple close games with good teams and went into overtime and we were able to escape those with wins. And, you know, we're beating the teams I think we should beat. And whether we can get over the hump and beat somebody that we shouldn't, then we'll, we'll see. With that, uh, one of the big conversations we had before the season was kind of rebuilding that defense. You had Drew back, and Drew's been playing, I know, at a really high level for you guys. But on the defensive side of the football, what you've seen in the growth, just getting those kids out there, getting those reps at the varsity level. Well, yeah, there's nothing like playing time. And I, I, you can practice all you want. You've still got to go out and play. And then, it, you know, at some point, your athleticism has to take over and, and you're the baseline of your success every year defensively is just what kind of athletes do you have out there? How much team speed do you have? How much size do you have? And I think we knew coming in that we would be fairly average when it came to the size part of it. We're not a big football team. We didn't see that this would be an extremely fast team. So we knew we'd have to be in the right place at the right time and be, be pretty fundamental and, the biggest challenge we've had is just getting to be better tacklers. And that sounds pretty trite, but it's true. We just haven't tackled very well at times. Last Friday, we were on the field way too much in the second half against, you know, Marshalltown, who's had their issues all year. And that was the only disappointing thing. Uh, offensively, we had the ball, I think, for seven possessions. We scored on six of them at a fumble and a, and a, which we recovered, but then had a penalty on the one drive that forced a punt. But other than that, we were, we were okay offensively. We're just really working hard to, you know, the good playoff teams usually anchor that success with a really good defense. So that's what we're working at right now. You uh, look on these, that side of the football, you talked about athleticism. You got Eli Reardon playing a little bit. Of course, he's your outstanding tight end, future Notre Dame fighting Irish, but getting him on the defensive side of the ball, just an understanding snap count, those kind of things. How careful do you have to be to almost not play him too much, if you will? Well, it's been a challenge because we're just not built to practice that way, but we, we, we have been, and he's, he's had spots where he's really helped us. But he doesn't get, you know, the day-to-day -day reps where things like snap count are, are an issue at times. And but he's such a good player and such a good athlete and a matchup issue for almost everybody. I mean, we have to use him, so we're going to. And I, I don't, you know, he's not on any kind of a snap count. We just use him when we think he can help us. And we're not afraid to do that with anybody. You know, you've got to be a pretty good athlete to at this level to be a full-time contributor on both sides. You see a handful of guys doing it, but I think he's the one guy on our team that has the potential to do that clearly. Gary Swenson joining us here, conversation with the coach presented by Elite Eye Care. Coach, with that, it's a look over to Ankeny. You mentioned the defending state champions, a team we knew coming into the year was going to be really good defensively. They returned a lot on that side of the football, but the improvement that I've seen out of the quarterback spot of J.J. Cole really over the last three weeks feels like he's more comfortable with the offense. He's taken a big step forward. What does that do knowing that you got a big-time quarterback on the other side? It causes a lot of concern. He's a very good player, but we knew that coming in. We saw him this summer. We did some seven-on-seven seven work with them. I don't think the ball hit the ground the whole day. I mean, he's just accurate. He's got some very good receivers, and they've got a they've got a really nice running back. So they can they're balanced, and they can hurt you in a number of ways. And he's, he's getting better every game, which is a big issue for the rest of us. But, you know, the scary thing is he's just a junior, so we're going to be contending with him for a while. But he's what, you know, th they're looking for at the next level, a great big frame that has a tremendous touch on the ball. I really like him. I think he's going to be a not only a great high school player in this area, but he's going to have a nice college career for somebody.
Yeah, he's already got opportunities and scholarship offers from Iowa, Iowa State, Florida State also involved with them. And uh, well, his dad knows some people in the college ranks too with his yeah, kick, yeah. Kick, kicking clinic. That helps out too. Hey, speaking of the kicking game, Pelham hasn't attempted a field goal all year, but he's a really good kicker, an outstanding punter. You know, special teams, it's something that sometimes, at least in our conversations, tends to be overlooked. Looks like Ankeny also really strong there. How about you guys? Where do you feel you're at special teams wise? Well, he is a good kicker. We saw we practiced with them on the scrimmage day, and I, I was he's got to be frustrated because they haven't had to kick field goals. I mean, they just take it in and score, but he's a threat to score in the kicking game from anywhere. We've been doing okay, you know. Dawson Stein is our place kicker and our punter, and we don't usually like to tie up the entire kicking game in one leg, but he's, he's done a nice job and we're, we're happy with where he's at. Our coverage teams have been good, but not great. And, and sometimes your coverage teams reflect the depth of your athleticism on your football team. And, but our guys are doing everything they can. They're, they're, they know we've stressed it and we've worked hard on it in practice and it, it's getting better. Coach, you mentioned it's homecoming week, and uh, I remember a long time ago when I was in high school, Coach always said, don't get caught up in the hoopla. You know, there, there's a lot going on. There's maybe some places you out there teepee and you can get some trouble. Be smart this week. Is that a conversation you still have to have with the kids? You know, it's changed over the years. I, it really has. It's not, it's not as big an issue, I don't think, you know, leading into the game. I mean, you do have some traditional things that go on, you know, a parade and a you know, usually, and we'll have an assembly on Friday. But I, I think for our players, it's a pretty routine week, and they just approach it like any other week. There are a few other activities that get fit in, but it's it's just not as much as you would think. It's number one. You're taking on Ankeny. They won the state championship last year. I know you have your kids' attention every single week, but this one's got to be a little bit easier to make your way through the grind, and especially as we're making our way through the season, week six here. Pretty easy to get the kids' attention, I'm going to guess, this week. Well, I think long-term, we're all looking at trying to be a playoff qualifier. And that's not going to be easy this year because, you know, last year everybody was put in because of COVID. There's there's 16 qualifiers, and it's going to be very competitive because the, the RPI that we use doesn't punish or reward you based on whether you played up or down. Uh, so you could you could have played three or four play teams in a lower class, and you don't get punished for that. They're, the win is a win. So every game's important. I think that because we're playing a more high profile opponent like this, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't expect that going into the game you have to motivate your kids about their capability. Like I said, we practiced with them back in August. And we got our eyes opened early in that practice. Man, this is a very good football team with just how physical they were. And it was really good for us. And I thought it helped us. But we're not under any illusion about how this game can or should go. It, we're just going to go out and play the best we can. And if, if they're good enough to get done what they want to do, then so be it. But we're, I don't think either either side has any preconceived ideas about the way the game should end up. Well, Coach, should be a fun one out there on the field Friday night. Appreciate your time as always, and we'll be watching. And you, you stay out of the hoopla too, all right? Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Gary Swenson joining us here. Conversation with the coach presented by Elite Eye Care. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at iDrDesMoines.com. Guys, are you looking for an excuse to watch football all weekend long? 
then schedule your vasectomy with the Urology Center of Iowa. The Urology Center of Iowa offers nitrous during your vasectomy, cutting-edge technology to help you relax during your procedure. Make the call to 515 400 3550. That's 400-3550 or online at iowauro.com. Vasectomies with the Urology Center of Iowa. And tell them you heard it on KXNO. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. Why do businesses succeed? The Better Business Bureau sees the traits of successful businesses every day. It's not easy, but it is simple. The BBB fosters trust between Iowa businesses and consumers. Visit BBB.org. Welcome back. One final time prep preview here on CISN TV. Powered by Fairway, I'm Trent Condon. As we get ready... For tonight's matchups, we look back at what we saw a week ago. How about this? After tonight, we will be two-thirds of the way through the regular season at the Class 5A level. Every single year, crazy just how fast it goes. A lot of great games on tap this evening. We got two of them here for you on CISN. Game one, it is Ankeny against West Des Moines Valley, a top-five matchup. Myself and Dar Danielson will be on the call for that one. Ankeny coming into the year, lost a ton off their offense a season ago. It was also a new quarterback with J.J. Cole taking over. We knew the defense was going to be good, and it's been outstanding all season long. They returned eight starters from that defense a season ago in the state championship team. They played at a high level, but you're also seeing now Ankeny make those improvements offensively. Cole last week had a huge performance. He went 17-19 throwing the football. He's taken a big step forward. Feels like he's getting more comfortable in the offense that Ankeny is running there with Coach Nelson and company. He's done a really nice job. The offensive line continues to gel, and of course they have the running game. McCullough stepped up as that number one receiver. Kind of all the pieces now feel like they're there for Ankeny, and there's a reason now. They are ranked number one. On the other side for West Des Moines Valley, this is an opportunity now to see exactly how much they've improved since the beginning part of the season. You go back, week one, it was a hair-on-fire victory to beat Waukee Northwest. Week two, they got stopped by Southeast Polk out in Runnels, and it was a rough performance at times for the Tigers. They've made improvements. That defense now starting to come into its own. You know Morrow can throw the football around. They're going to try to run it against that talented Ankeny front. Can they have success there? If they can get the running game going just a little bit, I think that'll open things up enough for Valley to keep this one tight. Should be a good one. And we'll have the call myself and Dar Danielson coming up for you here in just a little bit. Our other matchup coming up this evening, another very intriguing one. Paul Yeager and the crew up in Ankeny when Centennial welcomes in Sam Anderson's Urbandale Jayhawks. Saw Urbandale a couple weeks ago, one of the best defensive performances of the season out of the Jayhawks. Every single year, you know what they're going to be able to do there, but their quarterback, Roddinghouse, has also been playing very well. He was a starter as a year ago as a sophomore. You can see his development now as an upperclassman. He's going to have to make some plays. These are two very good defenses in Centennial and Urbandale. 
Who can make that big play? Who can come up with enough offense? I think that's something to keep an eye on here tonight. Ankeny Centennial facing off against Urbandale again. You can also catch that game right here on CISN. Some other games from across central Iowa coming up tonight. It is Des Moines East. They'll be welcoming in Sioux City West. An opportunity for the Scarlets to pick up a victory. Dowling Catholic, they'll make the trip north up to Johnston to take on the Dragons. Dowling Catholic still trying to find their footing. They get back on the winning side last week with a win in Council Bluffs. Now step up in competition against Johnston. A lot of new faces there. The injury to their quarterback, Jack Rutz, has been an impactful one for the Dragons. But a lot of saw a lot last week out of the sophomore Brodus. And we'll see if he can take another step forward here in week six. Des Moines Lincoln, they welcome in Marshalltown. Lincoln may be on the fringes of a playoff berth. They need to pile up victories, and they'll get a chance against the Bobcats coming up tonight over on the south side. Waukee looks to make it two in a row as they make the long road trip out to Sioux City. They'll be taking on the Stars of North, that game being played in Sioux City at Morningside College. Southeast Polk, they get Linmar coming in, a very good Linmar team that is undefeated and playing at a high level. One to watch tonight with Southeast Polk. Valley and Ankeny, as we mentioned, we'll have that game for you here as well on CISN. And finally, at the 5A level, a battle of city schools. Roosevelt, another team, it's been back-to-back -back losses for the Rough Riders. They look to bounce back tonight against Des Moines North and try to get win number four of the season for Des Moines Roosevelt. That's what's on tap here across central Iowa. Let's get ready for our game tonight as myself and Dar Danielson We'll have the call. Number five, West Des Moines Valley, hosting number one, Ankeny. It's our Central Iowa Game of the Week, of course. You can catch it right here on CISN TV. And also, the radio call, 96.9 The Bull. Come your way next. Kickoff around the corner. It's Ankeny Valley next on CISN. <laughs> 